Long time, we got the rain. Yeah. These rust marks. We got a wet floor. That thing's wet. So, this is the reset. The reset was trip. <clears throat> and it could be that reset is tripped because I uh, got water on the connection, possibly. Yeah, I'd say this one. Oh, it's only a few years old. Well, the problem is that they don't last as long as they used to last. I don't see. Should have a date on it. This has probably never been flushed. It's probably never had the anode changed. There is an anode under here, under there. Should be checked once a year. This is the overheat valve right there. And we can see that that goes outside. So there's no water coming out of it basically. It's not, it's all dry. Yep. So, I don't think it's overheating. We could turn it down. Um, and so basically this controller, there's two controllers basically. You can see we got water up in there. This controller will heat the top of the water heater first. And then when that's up to temperature, then the bottom one kicks in. This is a 220 volt water heater and should have a, a collar on that connection right there um, so we're going to take this bottom cover off take a look at it and see if we can do something with it probably not probably has <clears throat> what happens is when you don't change that anode there's basically it's a electrolysis rod in there and under this cap and that electrolysis rod basically takes any whatever chemicals electrolysis that may eat the pipes up somewhere down the line and it eats it up inside the heater and if that isn't changed regularly what happens is it eats it up inside the, the heater so the tank will rust if the anode is bad <clears throat> so yeah, let's take a look at this bottom one just for the heck of it. And we got our little friendly creeper hole right there. And we do have signs of the creepers here. You gotta just love them. It's like a love-hate relationship, you know. <clears throat> so. Okay, so that's the bottom one. This pad is saturated. You can see the water gonna rust on that screw hole. This is the kind of thing where you gotta be careful because the... Uh, power may be coming through that pad when it's wet like that and if you're standing on a wet carpet then you're gonna get beat <sighs> yeah this video is for informational purposes only don't try this at home um, uh, there's electrical shock hazard hazard that may kill you right so what we can do with a clamp meter we can check to see if that heating element is on and pulling about what 15 watts or uh, 5, 10 amps, something like that. There's a formula depending upon the heat element rating. But uh, if that's working then, I mean it may limp along for a little while, but if that moisture gets up in that switch again, it's going to blow it. So we got problems here, right here in River City. <sighs> Old joke, right? Old school joke, all right. Okay, so this one, we may have lucked out on this one. As we got this guy here, looks like a leak and it's leaking right from that heat element. Uh, so I'd say that heat element could be replaced and this thing brought back to life. Yeah, that moisture up there could be simply from the heat and the leak down here. Yeah, yeah so this is going to require... A large wrench to pull that out if it possible we can get that out. I don't know. 
Like I said, we're gonna try and salvage this one. I'm gonna put a new, uh, it looks like it's leaking from where that element is hooked in. So we got the power shut off. Now let's shut the power off before you mess with this stuff because you could get bit by draining it. Uh, you gotta at least drain it halfway. Come out over there. Pretty good. So, let me get this out of the whip. Watch out for the bikes. <sighs> could look at this and see if it's wet down here too. If it's wet in there, then these could be leaking as well. Okay, so since we're going the heck up here out in the boonies, oh, this one, it's got different threads. It's bigger. Brand new one. My partner got me. And so we're going to have to put a new seal on it. Basically, you got the gasket sealer on here. Teflon tape. Put the old one back in. The old one's still got continuity on it. Looks pretty good. I would not over tighten these things. Um, you gotta be careful because if you over tighten them, then the O-ring disintegrates basically. That's what happens. So, it's kind of a trial by error thing, whatever. And, uh, and it was a plumbing nightmare, right? These things did not shut the water off. Right, thanks for watching guys. If you need any help, you can contact me, 707-443-8347. BassTech72588 at gmail.